Welcome into a Friday's edition of the Jordy Collada Show live here in the undisclosed location. We are jam-packed on this Friday. Every day we're driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Check them out online at GEAUXChevrolet.com. They've got a brand new used car lot over on Florida Boulevard. You can check them out at Go Express Auto Sales. Go Chevrolet is located in Laplace, Louisiana. We appreciate them supporting the Jordy Collada Show every single day today. We are packed. Kim Mulkey from the Naismith Hall of Fame. Springfield, Massachusetts will be the center of the basketball world tomorrow as one of the most decorated Hall of Fame classes, if not the most decorated Hall of Fame class, to be inducted, which will feature the LSU women's head basketball coach. Coach Mulkey will stop by here at 7.30 this morning. Before we get to her, Corey Kiner, who is one of the top running backs in the country, He's an LSU football signee, and yesterday was named Mr. Ohio in football. We'll talk to him at 7.15 this morning. 8 a.m., Galen Iverstein, who's the only butcher in town from Iverstein's Butcher Shop, will stop by here over on Perkins Road. He'll be in the undisclosed location coming up at 8 a.m. this morning. Second hour, Cole Kubelik, Ben Mintz, Nathan Velasquez. Stealing today, ladies and gentlemen. Stealing. Stealing. Uh, Katie is here. Noah is here. Lizzie is here. On this Friday, beautiful Friday. Kelly just left. She's going to play in a golf tournament. I can't wait to hear about that. I hope it's not at U-Club. Uh, it's not at U-Club. <laughs> Barstool Sports might be safe. I the saw that, tournament. man. And then uh, TPC Louisiana put out a, an offer, too. So now it is completely not on uh, Louisiana or LSU. It's on the NCAA. Which it has been the whole time. Uh, yes. If, uh, uh, if LSU if, just, if Barst- wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time. That's right. Talk, took a ricochet I shot. Mean, it wasn't me. For <laughs> God's sakes, man. It was not me. me. <laughs> but if Barstool could put that together, we'll ask Mincy. I know. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's incredible, dude. Put uh, it together at Scottsdale. Majestic Brews, Majestic Coffee brings you our grounds every day here on the Jordy Colada Show. DeliciousSips.com. DeliciousSips.com. Roasted com. and shipped out from New Orleans straight to you. All of those guests... Only one in the undisclosed location, so all of them will be via phone lines, which is compliments of Metropolitan Health Group. Shout out to Charlie Harvey, Jason Ramazan, the entire crew over at Metropolitan Health Group. Real doctors, real solutions. Check them out if you need help. MetropolitanHealthGroup.com. And uh, our water, True Blue Water. We've gone through our first tank nearly. We have. I mean, one week, and we've gone, what is that, five gallons? Uh, five gallons. And it's so good. That's after we went three months with no water, turns out we might have needed some. <laughs> How did we get so long without water? Y'all thirsty? Oh, Thank yeah. You, <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Give me another peanut cracker, though. Yeah. My, God. My mouth is so dry. Uh, <laughs> all right, LSU is facing Alabama in baseball. I doubt we talk any of that this uh, this Friday. Best of luck, boys. Yeah, go get them. Go em. get them. Go get them. Hopefully, we've got something good to talk about on Monday. Alabama's a pretty good squad. I mean, uh, everybody's good compared to what we put out there. Mississippi but. State won last night against um, Missouri, and I don't. Okay. Did y'all see that catch in the outfield that uh, Missouri made? Uh, it Missouri, was a home run. Uh, yeah, yes. Missouri. Like yeah, it was about very, to be a home very run. Mississippi. Is that <laughs> how you say it? Say it again. Put the Z's in what? there. Say it. Missouri. No, no, Wait, what do y'all say? Missouri. 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 What do I say? How do I say that? Missouri. Missouri. Oh, okay. Very, very, very on the really. O U R. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ever since on the Miz. Yes, yes. So, anyway, um, that kid will probably be featured on the Sports Center. That catch he made in the outfield. From was where? Phenomenal. At Duty Noble. <laughs> No, I mean, it was going to be a home run. It. Missouri. <laughs> Missouri. <laughs> Mizzou. Mizzou, there you there go. There you go. home run, yeah. and he caught it. And oh, okay, it was so he so, robbed it. It was robbed really it. amazing, though. It was such a cool catch. No, I was over at Traction on the flag football fields. <laughs> Skull dragging some team and listening to some obnoxious dad who we run into again on Monday. Take the take take the Bruins by 100. Uh, what do you think like the spread is? Right now? Uh, 99. <laughs> we'll cover. We'll cover. Didn't you already get in trouble for running up the score? Um, not really, but I heard some. I just heard some chirps. Some, there's some rumblings. Yeah, really? the phone. Yes, yeah. he's dude. You just have to be enemy number one. You have a stance on that, Noah? <laughs> oh, I think you just keep going. Hey, man, what do you want me to tell my team to do? Yeah, right. you know what I mean. The old Miami. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me you to? You don't tell want them? us to dance. Not to score. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they <laughs> practice too. They coach from the third quarter. You know, I mean, yeah. we practice. Everybody practices. In basketball, Betty. They used to turn the school board off. No, when they got that bad, they just flick it off. Yeah, I mean, at that point, That's I, would worse. Just end it. I would just, yeah, we yeah, I want to see the score. Yeah. <laughs> right. That thing go to triple digits? Let's say 63 to 2. Wow. 
Good day for the home team, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's like playing Scotland every year. Yeah, oh. I bet. Scotland is going to be loaded yeah, this I would year. not want to have a boy yeah. playing on a team against you. I no, would you would make, not. I would make sure that my boy was on you, whatever <laughs> no, team you, you were coaching. In fact, one of your best friends has a team, has, has a kid on our team. I know that. Uh, and uh, I can yeah, tell that they, are, uh, they have loved being on the good guy's side. They do love being on your team. Very entertaining. Uh, <laughs> Recruiting is. is open. Transfer <laughs> portal, Jordy. It absolutely is. We travel. And you're a great coach. That's all they talk about. We're looking about. for a team you're bus. A uh, we, need a, we need a bus sponsor. <laughs> we do need a bus. <laughs> Can we trade for We want to go play teams in Lafayette, <laughs> New Orleans. In Houston. Uh, big news before we jump into some of these guests, and we're going to talk to Corey Kiner here in a couple of minutes. Looking forward to our conversation with Kiner. Kiner, I'm telling you, is going to be a guy from a freshman standpoint. You think about the the running back room at LSU right now, and there's some uncertainty on who it's going to be. Is it going to be Emory? Is it going to be Ty Davis-Price? Could it be somebody coming in on, on this this class? Kiner's the guy that he, he might be a name to watch. I mean, he had an explosive senior season the numbers. up at Roger Beacon High School in, in Ohio, and we'll talk to him about his senior season, his relationship with Kevin Falk, how his communication has gone with Jake Peets, and, and what his anticipation is for his – freshman season but if you want to look up some highlights man cat's a baller coming in and uh one of the uh one of the the, the stars of this star studded class for lsu football uh that that has been signed here in the uh, in the 2021 cycle uh before we jump into today and we're jam-packed i'm looking forward to all of our conversations in our, our friday food segment with galen iverstein uh over from uh iverstein's butcher shop over there on perkins uh perkins road we have um, the meats they got the meat. They got the meat. They, they got the meat. I like this little delivery system they're coming. Butcher Box, yeah. watch out. We're coming for you. Um, <laughs> let us give an ode and, and show some time and respect to Simone Augustus, who it has been announced here on this, uh, on this Friday uh, that she is stepping away from the game after a just illustrious basketball career. If you're from Baton Rouge, and you are around my age um, or just a part of this generation of sports fans, there is absolutely no way you don't know about Simone Augustus. I still remember the first time that I saw Simone play. She was on the cover of Sports Illustrated for Women as a freshman in high school at Capitol in North Baton Rouge. If you ever saw her play in high school, she was an artist before you thought of basketball in those terms. I always was, I was a basketball player coming up, so I just thought of it as being a, a, a sport that you, you, you loved and you go out there and you try to get better at. When you watch Simone play, she made it look simple. She made it almost look like it was art. Simone Augustus, Noah, she's the first person I ever saw walk up the floor, and we were in the dungeon, which now is the LSU volleyball facility that's where they practice that's where they um they they, they train um that used to be lsu basketball's practice arena and in the summer they were they had some of the best pickup games that you could find um football players just athletes from all over simone came up there as an eighth grader as an eighth grader and was scrimmaging against guys like rec guys football guys were out there um and she was the first person i ever saw they had a score on, on her end, and her team was bringing the ball up the floor, and she was the point guard, and she dribbled it between her legs the whole way up the floor. <laughs> the whole amazing. way up the floor, kind of like the old Allen Iverson, mm -hmm. where he would just, he, it, it, it was, there was no effort to it. He was just simply walking down the floor with the basketball in his hand, and he was just crossing it in between his legs. She did that and had this swagger to her. Ease. Where it was like, I mean, she'd have the dread, she'd have the headband, she'd have the socks pulled up, she'd have the freshest shoes, and then she'd come out there and bust your ass. <laughs> I mean, like, embarrass people. And what she accomplished at Capitol, where she took them to state championships, she was a McDonald's All-American, she was a three-time National Player of the Year, I think. If not three, she was definitely two in high school. And she was the most decorated women's college basketball recruit of her generation. The last time Kim Mulkey was here, she told the story about recruiting her, coaching against her, both as an assistant coach and then as a head coach at Baylor, and some of the uh, the, the thought you know the thought processes of uh, of going up against her. 
Uh, and then she graduates LSU after taking that program, which was had 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 no reputation. I mean, Sue Gunner had a a reputation of being a very likable, hardworking, um, you know, kind of a, a, almost a a rebel for the sport. Somebody that that loved women's college basketball and was at a great spot at LSU, but she never really won anything. The only thing. Sue Gunner probably won in her time in a long career at LSU. The top of her resume would probably be winning the recruitment of Simone Augustus. Is getting Simone on LSU's campus and beating Pat Summit, Kim Mulkey up at Louisiana Tech, Gino Ariema at UConn. I mean, name a school at the time that cared about women's college basketball and they didn't make Simone a priority. They spent their entire recruiting budget on Simone. I mean, Pat Summit and Tennessee were at nearly every single one of Simone Augustus's senior year basketball games, junior year basketball. You could go to Capitol High, and Pat Summit would be sitting on the front row of Capitol's bleachers on a Tuesday night, and she'd be back on Saturday. And whenever LSU was in town or she was traveling in town to watch LSU play, she'd spend three days at Capitol. She'd go two days early, go to the games, and make sure that she was in front. The, 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 the best, the, the Kim Mulkey of her time, Pat Summit. And then Simone takes LSU to four straight Final Fours. Four straight Final Fours. A program that had nothing to show for anything as far as history and reputation went. Number one pick in the draft, eight-time All-Star, world champion, finals MVP. She won championships, four WNBA championships. She was the finals MVP in 2011, number one overall pick in 2006. She spent 14 seasons in Minnesota. She spent the last two seasons with Los Angeles. She's transitioning from a player to a coach. I just wanted it to be on the record that our thoughts – of, of Simone Augustus and what she means to the basketball community of, of Louisiana and ultimately what she'll probably mean to the WNBA history because of just how influential and how good of a player she was. And she's a great person off the floor. I mean, I know that we're, we're celebrating her basketball accolades and accomplishments and successes, but if you've ever had a chance to meet her, she's a real, I mean, she's a super cool chick, man. I mean, like, she is one of the coolest human beings. Just And when I say cool, I just mean overall nice, smart, respectful, just makes you feel good when you talk to her. I've seen you know kids run up to her with these stargazed eyes, and two seconds into the conversation, they're broken down, and they're just having human being conversation just because she doesn't allow all that stuff to take over. She's very humble. She deserves everything she gets. And for our community, if you are from Baton Rouge, if you are from the, the surrounding area of Baton Rouge, today is a, is a beautiful day in celebrating one of our finest. Somebody that has, has really put us on their, on, on, you know, has, has put us on, put Baton Rouge on the map from a, a basketball standpoint, but brought a lot of attention to our community for a lot of positive things outside of just an, athletic skill and you know I, I'm, I'm a proud member of 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 this community I'm a proud uh Baton Rouge native and for somebody like Simone Augustus to to retire her basketball career after such an illustrious career and such uh, of a great way of representing our people our community our state I just think that it is uh, it must be recognized uh because I mean, her name and her number hang in the LSU rafters. Her name and her number hang in the in the Capitol rafters. I think she should have a she should have a statue. I mean, if we're handing out statues <laughs> and we're doing the statue thing, and Bob Pettit, and Pistol Pete ultimately will have one, and Shaq has one. Simone Augustus deserves one. She did more for the women's game, or as much for the women's program, as Shaq did for the men's program. She brought as much attention to the men's program or to the women's program as Shaq did while he was here. 
And I, I, I mean that wholeheartedly. That's a really nice tribute. I mean, it was, um, she was, she was the Shaquille O'Neal of women's basketball. I mean, I'd love to meet her now. She's great. She lives in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like I said, she's an LA Sparks assistant coach, but she wants to get into uh, coaching. She's we got a new coach here. I mean, we'll ask her. Where does she want to go? Just <laughs> name we'll, it. We'll ask her. Uh, all right, let's get up uh, and touch uh, touch base here with Corey Kiner, who uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, this conversation. Uh, let me see here. Yep. Oh, yeah. Buddy. We yeah, buddy. Went. We are up. <laughs> we are up. Uh, happy belated birthday to Tyron Matthew. Turned 29 years old. Only 29, dude. Still got some legs to him. I know. Hello. Corey, good morning. How are you, bro? It's Jordy Collada down here. We're live. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. You got to be doing good. Congratulations on the award yesterday, Mr. Ohio. Thank you, sir. Absolutely, man. What was the uh, What was it like finally getting that? Uh, get, it seemed like you were uh, uh, you were the front runner all season because of your accomplishments on the field. And my God, bro, you blew up your senior season: eighteen hundred yards, thirty two touchdowns, uh, state semifinals. You guys. Uh, came up a little bit short on the on, on the collective effort, but uh, recap your senior season for me, and then ultimately getting recognized like you did yesterday. Um, well, starting off senior season, well before senior season, we found out we were only going to have six games. Once we found out we were having a season, and then once we found out we were only having six games, my father was like, "You you're not going to be able to get all the stats here like you usually get in a regular ten game season." So. Um, he just told me whenever I touch the ball, I got to score. I got to make something happen because I got to get the same set as if I was playing a full season. So every time I stepped on the field, that was my goal. It's to, it's to um, do exactly what he told me to do. Seven touchdowns first game, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> we weren't wow. wasting any time, bro. Um, no, sir. <laughs> what about that recruitment, man? You've been LSU the entire time. I mean, you shut this thing down. Everybody's been knocking on your door. I'd imagine that Ohio State being in your backyard has been – been curious and been wanting to, to get you uh, in, in their class. But, I mean, it seems like you've been steadfast on LSU the entire time. Yes, sir. Um, well, once I started getting recruited, I told them that uh, – well, I told everybody that I was going to take my time with the recruitment. I wasn't going to make any decisions fast off of just – off of feeling off of a feeling that I have in the moment. So I, I took my time on the commitment. And once I once I found out LSU was the place for me, I told them that, I, that I'll be committed. And um, and I told him once I'm committed, my my decision is for sure. Like when I committed, I, I was thinking about a 40 year plan, not a four year plan. So LSU, they they got something that I could use for the rest of my life as far as education and football. So Kevin Falk tells a great recruiting story about you, and and, and Falk is a absolute legend in in, oh, yeah, in LSU sure. history, man. I mean, this cat is 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 one of the biggest recruits and best players in LSU football history. Went on to have the great career with Brady and the Patriots. But he tells a story about uh, recruiting you on on you kind of figuring out who he was through that recruiting process. Talk about that and talk about the relationship that you share with LSU's running backs coach. Oh yeah, yes sir. Well, Coach Falk came to came to to the school to recruit me and at the time like I knew, I knew of him, but I never, like I never seen him in person. I never met him. So when I met him, I didn't know who he was. And then once, once I, um, once he left and everything, uh, my father and my coaches started telling me who he was, and I'm like, oh, I just, I just met this guy. Like, so I was, I was just in shock. It's, uh, it's crazy when when you start doing research on him and you find out that Tom Brady has called him one of his most favorite teammates of all time and what he meant to the Patriots all those championships. What is he telling you about what they expect from you in year one? Um, well, he's expect he's expecting me to um, to contribute in some way. But I like I like I tell him all the time, I'm coming in and I'm 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 ready to learn. I'm ready to ready to do whatever the team needs me to do. Have you had any conversation with Jake Peets? Oh yeah, yes sir. I've I've spoken to him a couple times. Uh, he's telling me the exact same thing. Like I got to come in ready to ready to ready to fight for for his job. Does this seem like the offense that you were being recruited to? Because I know you the you know like the teeth of your recruiting was two years ago when Joe and that gang was here, and they were lighting up the record books on offense. Is this a similar style of offense that 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 you guys are now being asked to learn when when Jake Peets and Mangus and all these guys are now here on the offensive side of the ball? Oh yeah, yes sir. It's, it's similar, but 
I'm I'm ready for whatever they got for me. I'm ready to learn whatever they need me to learn. Like I said, I'm I'm ready to do whatever the team needs me to do. What's your schedule like? When do you get to Baton Rouge now? Uh, I'm I'm not really sure what it's like. What the schedule's like? Uh, I'm not gonna be down there until the second week of June because my uh, school's graduation is the first week of June. So um, I'm I'm not really sure what it's like. But when I get down there, I know we got conditioning test so i've been getting ready for that i'm it's track season right now so nice. i'm already in shape but um yes sir so what are you running so, track? Um, for track i'll run the four by 100 and the uh 200 meter. are you the anchor oh <laughs> uh, no sir no sir i'm not the anchor i'm the second leg Damn, I'm the second leg. you almost have a squad <laughs> um do you play any other sports yes, you play any other sports uh, I, I i just run track track okay. and football so but you, growing up, I played every sport, though. So. Yeah. Have you dove into Moffitt's off-season program yet? Did they send you the workout? Oh, yeah, yes, sir. I have, I have all the workouts, running back drills and everything like that. So with, with, with track season going on, I haven't been able to do every single workout, but I still work out every well, almost every day of the week. So um, I'm, go ahead. I'm, so I'm still, I'm still on top of, top of everything, staying in shape. So you're at Roger Bacon High School, which is in Cincinnati. What's the bu- yes, what's the buzz like right now around Jamar Chase being selected and reuniting with Burrow? Oh yeah. So um soon as that soon as he I found out he was drafted, um, I went to Twitter and made a tweet saying, um, the Cincinnati to uh L S U connection is strong or something like that. And just a lot of people a lot of people um that I know around the city, friends, family, all that kind of stuff. Um, just congratulating, congratulating me on picking LSU, and like maybe one day, if things fall in line, oh, you'll be able to come back home and oh, play for the city. Are you kidding me? Put four, could on you the imagine map. four years from now being in a Bengals jersey behind Burrow with jam on the outside after you've had that, a, a great LSU career? That would be crazy. It, oh. it would be really amazing if that happened. Um. Corey, I, a lot of people have a lot of expectation for you, man, in your freshman season. Do you feel that? I, I, I'm not putting any pressure on you, but, I mean, a lot of people look at your highlights and expect you to be a pretty early contributor at college football. Do you do you feel that? Um, I, as, To some extent, I feel it. But right now, the focus for me is to get on campus, uh, learn learn the playbook, front and back, like, like it's the back of my hand, get in the weight room, college weight room, and prepare my body to take – take the beating of an SEC football season. So right now that's my main focus. Bro, get right. And then, yes, sir. And then the season, once the season gets here, then then I'll have another focus, another set of goals. Get right, man. What number are you going to wear? Um, I, I want to wear 21. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Corey Conner, man, go get that state championship in track. We'll see you in South Louisiana soon, man. The, uh, the state of Louisiana is pulling for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, man. You too, Jeez, brother. Jeez, bro. Oh, get this guy. Get him here. What are we doing? Oh, Lord. I mean, you never know what you're going to get. Send him to SEC Media Days, man. Roger, yeah. right, Roger Bacon. I mean, great. Good luck on the track here, but we got to get this cat in Baton Rouge. I mean, that is impressive, that is man. impressive. Dude, how hard do you think it is to focus on track when he's like, man, I just got the Tommy Moffat workout program. <laughs> LSU is like, that's all I would be thinking about. It's uh-huh. like, I got it. I need it. I should have early enrolled, but... Go get that state track, dude. I don't know if I'd be an early enrolling, bro. Why if not? I had the chance. I mean, you can never get that last semester of yeah. senior year back. Yeah, but you can never make an impact your freshman year like you bro, could at LSU. If, if you don't dog, if I'm a dog, I'm you're a, just gonna show up. Corey Connor's gonna play next year, without a doubt. He's gonna Maybe play he knows year. that. That's what I'm saying. Oh, 100. percent I mean, BD energy, bro. Yeah, I mean that was he, huge. BD casual energy. seven a.m. I mean, conversation. Like, I mean, uh, all right, daily. We are I'll brought to you impact. by. Johnson and Spiller's <laughs> Dentistry had a great ah, oh. visit yesterday. Going to have to get an implant, boys. Oh, you are? And girls, yes. Uh, but it's all good. It's all Dr. good. Dr. Chad, Where? all up in uh, your mouth. Uh, I mean, the front one, dude. Is it Root dead canal. tooth? Dead tooth? Uh, it's, it's decaying. It's decaying. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're one losing veneer. ground. We're losing ground. <laughs> one veneer. Ground. That thing's just going to fall out one day. Uh, but a great trip over to the Baton Rouge office yesterday over at Johnson and Spiller's over on Perkins Road. Very easy in and out. Great service over there. Got the teeth clean. Took the x-rays. Got me set up on what's next on my, uh, on my, my life for the, uh, from the dental standpoint. Uh, I will be uh, getting an implant. Yeah, bro. It's, they're it's, yanking that thing. Yeah, they're going in. Are you going to sleep? Are you kidding me? <laughs> bro. Are you kidding me? I'm just saying. Boy? I did not go to John Spillers, and I wish I did when I, I got mean. my wisdom teeth taken out. 
And they didn't all think they put me to sleep, dude. What? Uh, dude. Yes, they did. Dude, I don't know. They did something. I uh, they did all soup material. Yeah, right well, there. my dad hooked it up. He's like, I got a guy. And I was like, we're never doing that again. <laughs> I bet I went, you do. I went back two times. And um, uh, give me the pills, baby. No, give me all Johnson the pills. and Spillers ain't going to let that happen. Yeah, no man. chance. No, they're taking care of us over there. Online, johnsonspillers.com. Remember, they're on Facebook. They're on social media. They're in Gonzales, and they're in Baton Rouge. Uh, let them help you out today. All right, let's take a quick break. We're going up to Springfield, Mass. Next, as we will link up with LSU women's head basketball coach Kim Mulkey, as she is set to be one of the inductees to this weekend's Naismith Hall of Fame. It should be a special weekend for basketball. We'll talk to the coach next year on the Jordy Colada Show, which is driven and powered every day by Go Chevrolet. Are you self-employed? then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother... Welcome back to the Jordy Colada Show, live on this Friday. Beautiful Friday down in South Louisiana. Good stuff from Cordy Kiner, the incoming football freshman Impressive. for LSU, Mr. Ohio. Last time LSU got a Mr. Ohio, Joe Burrow came down here and won a national championship and a Heisman Trophy. Hopefully it works out for Kiner as he'll start his LSU career coming up in June. Since the last time we talked to our next guest, a lot has happened. Uh, Kim Mulkey, King we dialed her up a couple of weeks back to talk about going into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, which she is a part 
of possibly the most decorated and intriguing class of all time. She will be introduced by Michael Jordan, the game's greatest player, and she will be a part of a class that features Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, and more. Uh, she is also now the LSU women's head basketball coach, which makes a ton of people happy, none more happier than the Jordy Collada show. We welcome in the Hall of Famer, Kim Mulkey here, LSU women's head basketball coach, to the uh, to the show. It is good hey, to have hey, you hey, on. Coach. Good morning, Coach. How are you? If I was any better, I couldn't stand it. I flooded the bathroom in this fancy hotel because I was busy. And uh, going into the Hall of Fame, good grief. Life is good, man. Go Tigers. It is, uh, it is good. We had two legislators here on our show yesterday, one of them, uh, Senator Pat Connick, who his bill is in, in charge of name, image, and likeness. And he said he has never, he's never had a bill go through uh, as uncontested and as easy as he expected this one with. And he thought that the, uh, the, the bump was, was the pep talk that you gave the crew up there last week. What, what has it been like? Since being back in Louisiana, we've seen you everywhere, and, and you and I have traded text messages, and you said, look, man, just let me exhale before you and I sit down again, and, and it seems like it's been a wild ride to get here. Well, Jordy, certainly I'm not there every day. I'm back and forth between Baton Rouge and Waco. When you're, you live somewhere 21 years, you don't just up and move overnight. There's so much to do, and and uh, yet at the same time, I need to be in Baton Rouge, and I was for four or five days there looking at houses, uh, look, being around the office. I'm still trying to hire staff. You're in the transfer portal, seeing what players you can bring. But, you know, it's a good kind of busy. It's a stressful kind of busy, but uh, it will settle down at some point. But certainly you feel like you take two steps back to solve one thing and you got to take a, you know two steps forward and then you, you got to set back. And when I say set back, it's just I'm one of these that wants everything in place. I want everything done yesterday. And there's just no way it can happen. And then you add the fact that I get to be honored and have to spend four or five days in Connecticut and Massachusetts and uh, come back. I have two commitments in May. It's crazy, but I'm going to get there. Just be patient, and uh, uh, it's, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, last time we had you on and we talked about this weekend, uh, it, it was an emotional response, a great answer. Um, but now that you're here, what, 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 what does this weekend mean to you now that you're in Springfield, you're around it, you see it, you smell it, you sense it? Um, what do you anticipate the next 48 hours of your life to be like? Well, from what I've been told from my mentor, Leon Barmore, who's also in the Naismith, he said, it's nothing like it. He said, it will be the most wonderful thing you've ever been a part of. And last night, uh, I had to practice at the uh, teleprompter. They require that you go and, and practice and see where you're seated. Uh, I just looked around, and I was like, oh, wow, all the people that, that you recognize in sports, that I recognize in sports, will be here. And uh, it, it just started kind of creeping up inside me, like this is going to be really, really fun and special. Yeah. Um, Coach, how good is Hannah Gusters, or how good can she be? <laughs> well, let me tell you, she's six foot five, and she was a McDonald's All American, the second ranked post player in the country coming out of high school. She was in the top sixteen all overall, and uh, she is uh, she's going to be special. Now you have to understand when we signed her, as with a lot of elite programs, she was a freshman every day going against an All American and going against a junior. Uh, potential all american so she had to learn the ropes and 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 like a lot of freshmen do and uh, but I'm so happy and and uh, honored that she would uh, continue to trust me and come and follow me to LSU she's never visited the campus none of that she just like a lot of people when you have relationships uh, they trust you and they think if it's good enough for you it's good enough for me coach and so um I just I can't wait to give her a big old hug yeah. um how, how this may be an unfair question. How close is LSU women's basketball to being a contender from your point of view? What has to be done to get there? You're you're, you're a master at, at building these things. How far away are you guys? 
Jordy, that's hard for me to answer yeah. because you have to remember, I know nothing about their current team. Mm-hmm. I don't know about individual players. I've studied it, and I, I, I watched from a distance but didn't watch in great detail. Um, that can't be answered for me until after I've been on that floor with them and um, see what what we have. And I don't judge people from their previous coach or their previous playing time I judge them from the time I start with them I had a when I took over at Baylor there was a player that had quit the team and uh, when I was hired uh, she came back in to see me and she wanted to come back to the team and I told her I didn't think that was a good idea because if you quit on the last coach I feel like you'll quit on me. And she said, no, coach, I need a coach like you to push me. And I let her come back, and she ended up being a first-round draft pick. But the point that I'm trying to make is be patient. I cannot work miracles. I don't have the magical wand to make somebody better than they are at the beginning. But I do believe in my talents on getting the best out of kids. I don't put a time frame on that. I didn't put a time frame on it at Baylor I just got to get to work and the hard part is I'm used to having my team in the summer either in summer school working with the strength and conditioning coach I'm not even there so I really don't encourage new ones to come until we're there because they get homesick and you need to be around them every day and that's that's hard and difficult for me and my coaching staff right now so I kind of come to the conclusion that, gosh, Kim, your very first team meeting with all of them may not be until school starts in the fall. Certainly returning players will be there with the strength and conditioning coach this summer. We will be on the road recruiting in July. We will be in and out in June trying to move, get situated, change offices, uh, decorate this, move this. Um, it's so much to do, and, and we're working extremely hard remotely when we're in Waco. We're working for LSU to try to get things done. Just the simple paperwork to get paid, just to, you know, get in the LSU system. All those those things just take time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, nearly 2,800 deposits on season tickets up to this point. What What have you made of the response from the public? Well, I didn't know the latest count. Some di- some people tell me 4,000 plus. Some tell me uh-huh. I don't know. All I know is it's a good thing. Yeah. If people are buying tickets before you coach your first game, that means they're interested. And uh, I thank those people, and I remind them again, we need you to help us get back to where you want our program to be. We can't wait until the wins come. We have to sell recruits before the wins come. How- coach, if you don't mind, can you take us? How, how did we get here? How, how did the I don't, from, from the I, last I, time I, we I, talked? How are you now, the LSU women's head basketball coach? I I said timing is everything in life, and you just ironically had asked me to come on the show, and you know there was no opening at LSU. You had asked me because of the Michael Jordan right. presenting me at the Hall of Fame, and in between the time you asked me and we talked, there was an opening, and we casually just talked and I casually just gave a generic answer and the next thing you know I was contacted and um, just my gut just kept telling me something tells you to go home and when I say home people I'm talking about the state of Louisiana I did not go to LSU I went to Louisiana Tech my home there 19 years in Ruston was phenomenal my home 18 years in Hammond southeast Louisiana was just the most wonderful life. So I feel like when I tell people home, it's the entire state of Louisiana. I want people that don't even consider themselves fans of LSU in any capacity. I want them, if they loved me and knew me growing up, I want you over there watching us. I want you to buy a ticket. I want you to, if you can't come because it's too far, buy a ticket and let's donate it to, you know, people in, in, in Baton Rouge that want to bring people that can't afford it. I just want it to be a program just like many on that LSU campus. I want it to be elite like those programs that I'll be surrounded by. I don't want to let anybody down at LSU. I want them to be proud. Who are some of the people you think of this weekend when your basketball life will be celebrated like it will be on Saturday? Well, we're very limited. You know, I don't write speeches, uh, Jordy. Everybody says, wow, that's a great press conference. That's a great speech. I don't write speeches. I jot down notes. 
and I'll just look at one word that will remind me to say something. But here they required us to turn in a speech for the archives and to put on a teleprompter. And you're limited three to five minutes is all we're allowed to um, talk. So I will probably be very, uh, I don't want to say nervous, but maybe uncomfortable because I need to follow the script and the speech. So uh, I'm sure I'll make some off the cuff remarks, but uh, I'm respectful of what they've asked us to do. And certainly the the gist of mine will be you're you're not up on this uh, platform uh, by yourself. And you certainly didn't get here without the help of others. I will, you know, thank the president, former president, Louisiana Tech, who talked me into even coaching when I was working on my master's degree. And he's deceased now. I will talk about um, the athletic director and the president at the time at Baylor University who gave me my first job. I've only been a head coach, guys, at Baylor University. (laughs) And uh, then certainly, uh, I can't name all of the players, but uh, the number of players that I've coached that um, you're not, you're only as good as your players. A coach is only as good as their players. And then uh, lastly, you, you're certainly going to, I'm certainly going to talk about my family, my kids, my mother. Um, and and it'll, it'll go by quickly, but uh, that, that will be the gist of what I, I talk about. Coach Mulkey, have you found a house here in Baton Rouge yet? No, no, but I've had lots of help. I've got lots of texts, and uh, <laughs> I looked for two. I looked for two days, and that's not my comfort zone either. I don't like to, even though I, I wear nice clothes, and a lot of my friends shop for me. I pay the bills. <laughs> that makes me uncomfortable as well. Uh, too many houses to look at. I know what I'm looking for. I just have to keep looking. You're not going to find it overnight. Um, you know, I know I've been told about traffic. I've been told, you know, all kinds of things. Um, I'm going to let that play itself out. I'll be there living temporarily in, in housing that's temporary, whether, you know, Lod Cook or wherever LSU puts me up until I find that one that I'm comfortable with. Do you find that forever home? That's right. <laughs> forever. Well, uh, I've always said Louisiana is my forever home, so let's let's remember that. But, you know, my grandchildren, my daughter will still be in Waco, and I that home in Waco is like, you know, so spread out that it can be like my resort and ranch home when I want a vacation. So it's paid for, and uh, I'm just looking for a different type of home in, in Baton Rouge, and, and I will find it. Uh, Coach, last time we had you here, and last one, we get you out of here. I know you're very busy. Last time we, you were here, we asked you about Simone Augustus and just her overall impact to women's sports, so to women's uh, basketball and what she meant to the sport. Uh, it has been announced in the last 24 hours that she is retiring from the WNBA and making the transition to an assistant for the Sparks. Now as the LSU women's basketball coach, what does she mean to the program and the relationship that you guys will, will have moving forward? Well, I put a statement out. I hope y'all seen that. If not, please share it. Uh, When I heard it last night, um, we were actually walking through the Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino, and we just stopped as a staff before dinner, and we wrote what we wanted to say to her because, um, unfortunately, I didn't get to coach her, but, wow, did I play against her. And uh, what you can use every adjective imaginable to describe Simone Augustus and how good she was. She's won it all, championships, MVPs, Olympics. Uh, What a competitor. Uh, What a great representative of of the Lady Tiger or Tiger program at LSU. Um, She just now gets Get, needs to get back home so we can uh, mm-hmm. hug her and so that we can use her in any capacity. And that's for all the former players. I want them involved. I want them proud. I, I want them to understand we don't get back to the level uh, that we want to go to without the former players involved. And uh, uh, she is she's she's going to go down in the history of women's basketball as one of the absolute greatest players ever. A national champion and a Hall of Famer. Your women's head basketball coach, if you're an LSU fan, Kim Mulkey, up from Springfield, Massachusetts, this morning before her induction into the Naismith Hall of Fame. Enjoy the weekend. You deserve it. Congratulations. We'll see you back home soon, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. There is uh, Kim Mulkey checking in from the uh, Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame here on this Friday morning as she gets set to, uh, to be inducted.
uh, over the uh, over the next 48 hours. Michael Jordan will be her presenter. Uh, she will be uh, inducted into the same class that features Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, uh, Kevin Garnett, uh, one of the uh, Tamika Catchings, uh, some of the basketball uh, elite, obviously, but some of the greatest names collected the in class. one weekend, in one class going in uh, with Michael Jordan just kind of being the cherry on top. Uh, as the presenter of not only Coach Mulkey, but uh, maybe the, the generations, the last 20 years best player uh, in Kobe Bryant, uh, as it will be a special weekend for, uh, for the sport of basketball, for the game of basketball uh, at the Naismith Hall of Fame. And LSU will have flair uh, all over the weekend with Coach Mulkey uh, going in with such a, uh, such a star-studded class. So uh, we appreciate just a couple of minutes with her here, uh, here on this Friday. If you're in the casino and you hear that Simone Augustus is retiring, do you not walk by the roulette table, throw a little something on 33? 33? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just, <laughs> just like, like man, man, why man, not? Man, Let's not. see what happens. It's God calling. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, but it was She's good. She's going to convert some fans. You said if you're an LSU fan, she's going to convert people oh, no to be LSU it. women's basketball fans. She, sure. will, she will make it. She will grab the fringe fans. Yeah, she will grab she will. The, the fans that are not necessarily fans of women's basketball, but fans of entertainment. Yeah. Fans of uh, good play. Fans of competition. Fans of work ethic. You know, things that, that will draw you to an arena, to a stadium that doesn't necessarily get you by the sport or an individual player, right. she's going to bring you in because you'll just be interested. Yeah. You'll just be intrigued. You'll just say, everybody's talking about this. Everybody seems to be flocking over to this place. Let me just see. And if you happen to walk in there on a, on a, on a Sunday afternoon or a Wednesday night where, you know, it's electric and they beat a top 10, top 15, top five team, you're hooked. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're in, you're, you're, you're sending your information into the LSU ticket office and um, you know, next thing you know, you're 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 a, you're a you're a women's basketball uh, fan at LSU, and you're a supportive member of of her fan base. Um, it's gonna happen. It is not if it is, and, and it, it's 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 with both sides. It's with both women's and men's basketball right now at LSU. Mm -hmm. I mean, the stock is shooting through the roof on both of those programs. I've got the over under on both programs. Being in a Final Four weekend in three years. Three years. I mean, I, I think that both teams are knocking on the door. And the women's basketball um, team program being a little further behind, as, as Coach Mulkey said, I mean, it's, it's, it's nearly a total rebuild. I mean, it's, it's, it's as close to an overhaul as you can find um, in the league right now, any sport. But, I mean... We see who the captain of the ship is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, one move, she's got one five-star already in town. I mean, when's the last time that happened? When is the last time that happened? Talking about Simone. I don't even know. <laughs> Sylvia Fowles, maybe? Right, I don't know. right after her. I don't know. Um, What's the render on me becoming an LSU fan? Oh. Today? Uh, yeah, I mean, a year. Should have been two weeks ago. I mean, look at what she's wearing. Yeah, purple belt. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a coincidence. It's an accident. It's, it's, it's happening right before our yeah, eyes. That's for exactly right. But you said, uh, or she said, that it's going to take time. And I feel like the difference, it may not be in the numbers or the results, but the difference of how that team's going to play is going to be apparent from game one. You're going to see bodies oh, on yeah. the floor. You're going to yeah. see effort, energy, and all the things that, I mean, it's going to be, would you say, sold out game one? Oh, it could be. It'll be, be close? Yeah, it'll be close. It'll be close, for It'll be sure. close. Or the, the first big game, it will be, um, there will be a buzz to it. There is going to be a, um, you know, th there's definitely going to be some interest to what she's bringing in early on, and she's going to have to capitalize on that. Oh, she's, the intrigue will be there. The buzz she's will. Gonna have to, she's going to really have to uh, take the, and make the most of that in, in capitalizing off of that moment, which she will. Yeah, look, you're talking about, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, I hear you. Um <laughs> But I, I, I think that both programs are just the, the buzz and the interest and the stock around them um, is, is going through the roof. I mean, obviously, Wade's roster um, is, is, in much more con is in much better condition than the women's roster is. But she's three players. She's three moves away 
from being a contender again. Yeah, she's setting up the chessboard, dude. She know I mean, she may not know what she's going to do, but she knows how to play the game. Absolutely. Um, so, good conversation. Thanks to Coach Mulkey for checking in on what I know is a very busy weekend for her. Uh, it might have been a little awkward there at the beginning of the of the interview when she was saying that she was clogging up the bathroom because she was busy. <laughs> no, was she like, told me in the she told me in the break <laughs> she was running her bath water and she was on the phone <laughs> with an interview and she went just in there forgot. And, yeah she went and she forgot. We should have specified that. <laughs> we should have specified that. That's why I'm trying to help her out here on the, on the back end of, of the interview just in case you're paying attention. Um, but I would think that in, in, in a high dollar hotel that they would have an emergency shut off. In a bathtub like that, just because it, maybe I mean, it's one of those old like Victorian times? style, yeah, you know. Shut off I don't in a know. Bathtub. I don't think he, he. This man don't even have a bath. He's about to get one, so there's no, no emergency no, no. shut off. No, no. no, no. <laughs> I think in, I think in hotels and somebody in the bunker like, got to know this. Up top. There's just a, a mark up top that if the water was to go yeah. above that, there's a fill the line. water would just would shut down because I mean, no, it doesn't shut down. What, but what it if you have? Out. I mean, what, what, what if you got everybody just like. Slammed saying, in hey, there. you know what? On the ninth floor, let's flood everybody <laughs> out. <laughs> you know what I mean? oh, the, the old school go to the bar, run the sinks, and shove like <laughs> yeah. toilet paper in there. I yeah. hated those people. I don't know That's what right. you're doing. Exactly. You don't even get any attention for it. I now, mean, if you did it at school, I'm okay with that. But you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, so I mean, we do need to check on the Springfield, Massachusetts Hotel and Industries <laughs> no, really on whether do. or not they've got a kill line on their bathtub. I mean, man. they're thinking about it now. you know why? That ain't Monkey's <laughs> fault. <laughs> I mean, well, really and truly. <laughs> I'm putting it on the hotel. <laughs> Have you ever done that? No, never. Okay, me neither. But I've but done it at my, I've done it at home. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I've done yeah. it at the house. Yeah. I mean, I've done it in a hotel. I mean, I've gone back in there and be like, oh shit. I left this on. Yeah. <laughs> my buddy did that to me in college, and it was in my room. I don't know why he thought he would fit like late night. I was not. He went. I didn't go home. He went home. He goes into my bathroom, like 3 a.m. I'd imagine, runs the shower. Falls asleep, ass naked, on my bed, <laughs> and his parents come home that morning at like 9 a.m. and there's water seeping from the bathroom through like oh, the main door, God. and they're like, Lloyd Courtney, I swear to God, <laughs> busting the door, my buddy's asleep, ass naked, on my bed. I'm not even home, and they're like, Cole, sorry, Cole, Cole, oh my God, you did it, and I was like, Yes, not my fault, dude, because I got the blame for everything when I was there, and I took I it. Like, it. Yeah, glad to do it. Glad to do yeah. it. There's a broken ping pong table. That was my fault. Wasn't home again. And then, but this guy floods the entire room, and then it's like they couldn't wait to call me on the phone. It's like, not me, dude. That's your that's your only that's your begotten son right there. Be proud, Lizzie. Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Falaya Real Estate. Remember, you can sell your ho- uh, sell your house by yourself and save thousands. It's do it yourself for selling your house. Uh, welcome to Empowered Real Estate. You can sell your home like a pro today. Learn more online at falaya.com or call Barrett Blondo at 225-939-6153. If you like doing things yourself, if you want to save more cash, then you need to check out Falaya Real Estate. It's do it yourself for selling your house right now. For more information, visit falaya.com or download the app at the Google Play or Apple App Store today. We will be back with Galen Iverstein from Iverstein's Butcher Shop as we welcome in our Friday foodie segment here on the Jordy Collada Show. We'll be back with more Driven and Powered by Go Chevrolet. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225 485 8022-225-485-8022 is where you can find A Bears Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet 
is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Anybody seen the latest from Dickie V taking up for Bruce Pearl? I mean, there we go, bro. <laughs> what happened? I if you didn't need Exhibit A of hypocrisy, Vital, all it takes is just cutting the check to the to the charity. Over the weekend, we know about the charity success that Vital had. He sent us the link on Sunday night. Awesome. They raised six and a half million. Um, a, a, a portion of that came from Bruce Pearl and his wife. Okay. Who, uh, who who posed for a picture with the Vitals, was at the function, beautiful event, very nice. I figured it out. You know what we need to do? Cut this man a check that's for the, for the chair. Maybe that's what he was asking for, dude. He was time. sending you the link to be like, look. $10. The whole he, time. he thinks yeah. that's why he's so upset. Well, she's allegedly dishing out all this money. He's not getting any. Auburn's head coach, who Auburn, of course, has an assistant. And Chuck Person, who was arrested in the facility by a federal agent for suspected cheating in college basketball. Bruce Pearl lost his job at Tennessee for lying to the NCAA. Once it was proven that he was lied, he was fired at Tennessee. And Vital praising him on Twitter for the support of his charity and talking about how great of a human being Bruce Pearl and, uh, and his wife is. Uh, I couldn't resist. I could not resist. Well, I you had, did fire I, off. I, I had to quote tweet. <laughs> what time was do? that? I had to quote tweet. It was 11 hours ago. Uh, <laughs> I quote tweeted uh, the Mr. and Mrs. Pearl. They're awesome, baby, with a capital A. <laughs> <laughs> They're solid gold PT peers. Prime time performers caring about others. I quote tweeted and said, it's the only way to get the good dick <laughs> is you got to pay up. That's it. At Dick Vital, this is the hypocrisy that people are pointing and laughing at you over. The double standard you display is comical. No, uh, no response from Vital on that. But I thought that that was just—I mean, I was laughing out loud reading that. How is he so lost? It's unreal. I mean, just the the senility of it all is—I mean, you're watching. I guess it's sad. Did we say it was sad yesterday? Yeah, I think. I haven't it's come sad. all the way over to the sad part, but. I guess he's just so old. It is. He's just old with the, the internet. Like, he knows what it is, and he just shouldn't be on it. Should we send Dick the extra tie-dye Jordy Collada show hoodie that we have? Um, is that who it should go to? Maybe so. Golly, I hate to waste that on him. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, like, um, I, I don't know. What Cut the sleeves off him. of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting something... Get him something for poolside this summer. Yes. In Orlando, man. <laughs> Crop the top. Get him the boot up. The, the wool yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Need to send him the That's what we need to send him. We need With to send him the check as well. Up. That's right. Personal check. That's right. Three you, uh, three dollars to the. Uh, <laughs> I think our boy is here. Excellent. Um, I think our, our next guest. We have the meats. Uh, we do have the meats with Galen Iverstein and Iverstein's Butcher Shop. Uh, Michael Kleber asked JC, "Let's raise some money for Will Wade to send the charity some cash." 
I mean, I'm telling you, that's the play. That. That's the play. We could do that. Just get on his good side. As my mother used to say, kill him with kindness. Yes, indeed. Which I never do, but it seems like good advice. Yes. Or kill him with money. Yeah, that's, that's kind. That's it it's a gift in kind. <laughs> Which it sounds like he responds to right. very yes. well. The cash. He responds to very Unbelievable. well. Unbelievable. I mean, this guy, bro. <laughs> how can you this just, guy. how can you go there and be like, well, I'm just going to say this and turn, turn Two-Face. You got Two-Face. Well, I mean, at this point, I wish he would just come out and just say, look, I've got a problem with LSU. I've got a problem with Will Wade. i got a problem with LSU, and this is why. And whatever it may be, you know, I mean, state it on the record, man, because it, it's become comical. My boy. What's up? Great head of hair, bro. Hair looks great. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. How are you, brother? Good. Yep, 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 yep. Did you bring, uh, did you bring drinks? Well, Lily told me I could. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's and I'm right. no mixologist. Yes. So as long as it fits in the glass, we'll be we good. brought some uh, cool pops. Oh, oh, look at this guy. Yeah, easy. Yes. Yes. Oh, easy. Eighteen year old over here. Easy. Oh, easy. Isn't that legal yeah, in Louisiana? Put that back. Put that back. <laughs> he did. He gave it to me. Shotgun uh, it. Thank you. Uh, you can. Yeah. Oh, it's Spring break. Let's go. Some, that's some TikTok content right there. There you go. It is. <laughs> Wait. Shh, shh, shh. That's our social media guy over there. Here we go. More Noah. Perfect. Sounds cheers, of summer. Cheers to a Friday. To a Friday. Kim Mulkey in the Hall of Fame. Kim Mulkey in the Hall of Fame. Right. Good to see you for Saturday. Okay. Uh, good to Excellent. See you, get in that microphone, buddy. Oh my God! What flavor did y'all get? I got lime. Rise. That's out of uh, Urban South, out of New Orleans. Yeah, lime. Okay. I'm not even right. a beer guy, and this is it hits a little beer. different. Yeah, it's not what beer. Is it? it's oh, it's a hard like, seltzer. Uh, there you okay. go. Everybody is, jumping in the seltzer. Game. That's okay, true. Look at him. Uh, Galen Iverstein from Iverstein's good to Market. See you again. Get comfortable. You all good, buddy? Yeah. Good. Uh, hair looks great. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Damn, hair looks good. Yeah, I usually don't have to compete with anybody, but here we are. No, one you one got cut no competition. Year program. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, okay. Our man, cut budget cuts. You don't have to keep any maintenance on it? Nothing above the ears? Well, I mean, obviously not. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful, Mame. Uh, Lloyd, you're the two seed for I sure. I know. That's okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes um, you got to punch above your weight class. All right, beautiful on the drinks. What are we eating this morning? So we brought a few different items. Um, right here, we've got. I don't know how. Uh, this you can go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. We need a, We need one of those lapels. Yeah, we need to put like a Britney Spears this is mic all on him. Yeah. Okay, we got hot smoke, meals. Smoke oh my god! Holy oh. shit! That we're making in house. <laughs> Look at that. It, so um, that's our house favorite. Everybody comes in asking for. Yeah, that's that's our what flying, I'm going after. Flying Hawaiian. Got some mustard yep, there, dip, too, if you want to do A little dip. That's our uh, pineapple and jalapeno what? pork smoked sausage. Got some boudin. I don't know Noah's about that. Noah's, Noah's worried yeah. about that workout he's yeah. got to do in a little bit. That protein that's in the protein. morning, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, right, good. that's right. And then, um, you know, we didn't have the undisclosed location. Oh, we didn't want wow. to get too fancy. Oh, and it was a goal of my life to make more people eat bologna. Okay. Because um, bologna gets a bad rap. Really? Why? What? Why is that? Well, well, it's a cheap meat. Everybody thinks it's pig lips and buttholes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I cannot say but. Yeah, you yeah, say absolutely. asshole. Absolutely. You can say whatever you want. Uh, okay. <laughs> and it's not. No FCC here. So we're making um, our bologna in-house, smoking it in-house, using pork belly and beef shank, which the Italians call asabuco. So. Oh, yeah. You got to dig in there and get that little, uh, that little, the marrow, little, the little marrow in there. So, yeah, we make it a little fancier than most. So so what is what, what is bologna then? Bologna is it's a cured meat that we're making in house. It's an emulsified sausage, so grind it super fine, high fat content, um, smoked at a higher temperature for quicker, at a high humidity, and it comes out beautiful. Um, we have been promoting we have been promoting you specifically and and Iverstein's as the only local butcher shop in town. That's us. That yeah. is that is not false advertisement, That's right? Not false. I mean, um, uh, well, uh, first off. Congratulations on that. And why is that? The, uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't mean to make you speak to the market. There's a lot of economics but, okay. there. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. The, the industry centralized over the last 50, 60 years. You know, back in the – all the way through the 70s, there was a butcher shop yeah, or on a every slaughterhouse corner. on every corner. Right. And um, the industry has just centralized to big feed yards, supplying basically three meat packers in the country that control our food system. So we kind of broke away from that, um, started out – Raising all of our own meats up in Kentwood. Right. And then um, opened the shop here in Baton Rouge in 2016. 
bringing they, in whole animals. This is your life, right? I mean, you grew up on this stuff. No, actually, um, this came out of me being a pretty mediocre college student. Yeah. And not Welcome knowing. to the party. Yeah. Yeah. Did, you, did you fit in well here? <laughs> yeah. Give this guy the last tie-dye. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, really and truly. So, uh, Welcome, bro. You know, if, if you're a mediocre poly, uh, poli-sci major, okay. your options are quite limited. Damn, you'd have fit in well at the Capitol, though. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I went and worked on somebody else's farm for a little while and um, figured out that's what I wanted to do and jumped yeah. in. So we, we bought a little piece of property up there. It's gone through a lot of changes over the years. You know, we started in 2009 just selling to farmers markets and restaurants and grew it from there and opened the retail shop in 2016 and been growing it every year. It's a great little shop on Perkins Road, man. It's uh, it's it's very cool, quaint when you walk in there. Everything's very transparent, I guess yeah. would be the way to describe it. I mean, you see the, the Farm butcher table. house. Yeah. You yeah. see the I mean, that, I mean the, all the we cuts put a big being four made. four-foot window right there in the cut room so you can see – what it means to bring a side of beef and break it down into retail cuts. That's yeah. something you're not going to see anywhere anymore. And, and then you've got something cool coming with a delivery service? Yeah, so we started this a couple of years ago. It really popped off last year during COVID, yeah. but we do a subscription service. So uh, every month you get a curated box of meat delivered straight to your door. Wow. Yep. And it's a pre, pre-made? It's all Yeah, it's all uh, – so it's a, a rotating bundle. So okay. um, it's going to have some staple items in it, like your ground beef, bacon for breakfast or breakfast sausage. Uh, chicken, and then one of our smoked sausages. And then from there, we put something to grill, whether that's pork chops, steaks, um, like flat iron steaks or something like that, and then some sort of a roast. So we keep it kind of rotating around, and then we uh, always send out some recipes to our subscribers on what to to do with what's in their box. How do the how does the public get there? How do they make this order? Iversteinfarms.com, right there at the top of the page. It's our it's called our butcher's bundle. Um, you can sign up there. The day you sign up, you get your delivery the next week. Uh, right across from Sprouts yep. on Perkins Road is where you can find the shop. Uh, very easy to find, very centrally located in the city of Baton Rouge, Iverstein's Butcher Shop over there on uh, Perkins Road. Galen and his crew doing excellent work. Um, it, lunch, you guys? We suspended lunch two years ago. Okay. Best decision of my life. Really? Oh, yeah. the stress. Really? Yeah, it's just there's we were trying to do too much, much. in that space, uh-huh. and fo- we need to focus on uh, production of meat, and not right. let it slow us down doing lunch. So when I walk up to the to, to to the counter now, I'm just I'm ordering cuts of meat. Yeah, so we have that big fresh meat case there that has plenty of cuts to choose from there. But we always say just because it's not in the case doesn't mean we can't do it. You mm-hmm. know, I got sides of beef and sides of hog hanging back there. If you got an odd request, we can make it happen. Nice. Yep. Uh, Iverstein will cut. Iversteinfarms.com. Uh, is where you can find them. Our Friday food segment, great, uh, great display. The sausage is incredible, bro. Yeah, so uh, on, over here next to your bologna. So where's the bologna? Right there on, on the on the white bread sandwiches. Okay. Oh, classic, just classic. a classic. Wow, yeah. Just and a then summer, uh, just a summer. We've got our house made salami on the my left side of that, and then our house made uh, beef summer sausage with a little bit of jalapeno bro, and cheddar good. cheese. Well, yeah, bro. It's bologna, man. It's bologna. We grew up on bologna. I was, I was about to say, yeah. a little summer camp sandwich. You never had a little bologna? Yeah, 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 yeah walk yeah. out the door. Now, can yeah. I uh, can I pan fry this bologna, get a little Absolutely. fried bologna so sandwich? So, we were doing uh, lunch. We did a sandwich called the Daisy Duke, hmm. which was fried bologna on sourdough with, with mayo and tomato. Ooh. It was awesome. Right. So, so if you didn't tell people it was bologna, you think it would? You think it would? People wouldn't know. Like, I mean, well, people, I mean there's no stigma to it. I like bologna. No, but, but some people see people eat bologna. Say, oh, actually, bologna's pretty good. Yeah. So, what you could the, call it mortadella, and people would have less of a problem. with Yes. It. Basically, what, what's the uh, oddest request you've ever gotten? Cut of meat? Anything? Oof. Somebody asked for a raw pig pancreas the other day. Oh. Um, what are they doing at their house? <laughs> yeah. Did you get it? <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> I'm hesitant to, to put that in somebody's hands and say they're going to eat it raw, so right. that's a little bit of a liability. Apparently, it's really good for you, but... Oh, you got some of these truthers out there that are yeah. on the internet too much. Yeah, we do a lot. I mean, it, it's funny, the diversity of our clientele. You know, it's everybody from healing themselves with drinking bone broth to, you know... The Southern just wants, Joe. Yeah. Just wants a big just fat a slab steak. of meat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, I, what what have you made of this industry, this farm to table industry, over the last five years? I mean, this is seen. It seems like it was a fad to start with, and now it's sticking. Where is there? Is it still saturated space, or are people kind of? Yeah, I don't think it's saturated, uh, especially in in Louisiana and Baton Rouge specifically. Um, I think you've seen it stick around because when it's not just um, 
a moniker or some sort yeah. of an idea. Right. It's when you put put a product in front of somebody and they try it and it's actually better. Well, those are going to stick around. You know, it's it's more of converting people with their taste buds. You know. Yeah. Uh, IversteinFarms.com. Stop in and see them on Perkins Road. Great spread here this morning on our uh, Friday food segment. Social media? Yeah, we're on Instagram mostly. All over Instagram? Iverstein Farms? Iverstein Farms, yep. Great to see you again, bro. Good to see you. Uh, we will me. be back. We will be back with Cole Kublik. We will talk to Nathan Velasquez. Uh, we will also talk to Ben Mintz. So we're jam-packed here during the 8 o'clock hour. We'll be smacking on Iverstein's yeah, get after uh, until we get out of here at, uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, IversteinFarms.com and sip it on this seltzer, buddy. Dude, what a what a hitter. I mean, oh, change your day. Yeah, right. Uh, IversteinFarms.com. All right, remember daily, uh, we're brought to you over here by Go Chevrolet every single day. Check them out online at G-E-A-U-X Chevrolet.com. And daily, we're brought to you by Nevadis. Nevadis is helping us with our custom-made web design and our mobile application. Katie gonna, and I are going to catch up with uh, Randall Nachman. Today over at Nevadis, their goal over there is to make your business more efficient, save time, provide a beautiful experience for their customers. Some of the favorite things they automate over there include payment processing, asset tracking, task management, and digitizing paperwork. Online at Nevadis.com. Uh, shout out to our boy Galen Iverstein for stopping by here in the UDL with a, uh, a beautiful spread from Iverstein's Butcher Shop over there on Perkins Road. Find them online at IversteinFarms.com. We come back with more of the Jordy Colada Show. Awesome. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abair over at Abair's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Abair's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abair over at Abair's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022-225-485-8022. Four eight five eight zero two two is where you can find A Bears Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at one fifteen twenty two Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com. Or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard.
All right, good stuff from Galen Iverstein here on this Friday morning from Iverstein's Butcher Shop as he stopped in with a great spread here. Kind of wanted him to stay. On the Jordy Colada show. He can stay, bro. Yeah, yeah. Cool guy. Chewing on sausage. Uh, if you yeah. look at his pictures over the years, you can see he's found his. You can see when the comfort level came from what job he was doing. The vibe. The vibe of how he's like the success translated to the long hair. And like, yeah. He's his nailed hair the changes over the yeah, years. Yeah, he had like the normal cut. Very similar to where I was. Like, I guess I'd do this <laughs> to get a. Cut. Like, you do the normal hair. Like, I'll get a normal job. And then you don't. And then right. you're like, oh, I'm going to go be me out there. Let your freak you flag fly. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Embrace it. Look where you are now. Look at me now. <laughs> Look at you now. Living bro. in basements and working in basements. <laughs> this seltzer is amazing. Uh, it is. The lime is good. So good. It is good. We were talking about finger sandwiches. And do you, I, I'm a firm believer. That I would not eat nearly as many if they weren't cut that way. Exactly. If you cut it, the For triangle sure. like that, yes. I might eat. What's well, a bite, Lloyd? I know, but I mean, if you, if you put it in the perspective of what a sandwich is, you're eating probably three whole sandwiches. I'm not. Eating I would never eat three whole, whole sandwiches. Sandwich, if you just put oh, that in front of me as just a sandwich, no way. I'm like, no that's what I'm saying. You, but yeah, cut it. In so if you cut it into fours, I might eat three sandwiches. I might eat twelve finger sandwiches, yeah. and you don't realize how much you just ate. And then I still you think cut my sandwiches it. in half. Which way do yeah, you go? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I go straight across. I go straight across. Diagonal or sh- this no, way? I don't. I don't. I don't do. I go straight across. I, do straight I, I make. Across I make too. a square. I do too. I Is that weird? You all go this way. I go yes. diagonal. No, yeah, you go you diagonal, diagonal, dude. Oh my god, the bite you can get no, on the diagonal. I, make I don't a like square. the edges. I don't well, like you the eat edges. it. At, you eat it at some point. <laughs> I know you, you do. I know you do. But I, I just like you're talking about the look of a finger sandwich. The, the, then you the should look, love that. The it's look like there's more edge. That that's kind of anti my cut. So. You go down the middle. Square. I'm a square. And then you go on. right into the Just middle like of this. it. So you go right into Just the middle. Like Where's your first bite? Middle. Oh, my God. You're a heathen. I do no, the same thing. There's no respect for the sandwich. No, no, the I, I, I'm, I'm, saving the, I'm saving the borders, which, in my opinion, are the best bites. That's why you cut it like I this. Also, I, but I also put <laughs> chips on a sandwich. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, but double stack the chips. So the middle bite, how could you argue that it's not the best bite? Well, you save it for last. Ah. The f- you, cause you, you have to accentuate, like, How do you save am the I middle real? for last? It's foreplay. You can't <laughs> just go straight in. You have to enjoy the sandwich, get yourself ready, then boom. The oh. big foreplay. moment. The foreplay is making the sandwich. That's true. The crunch. <laughs> you know what I mean? those chips. Is that enough crunch? Even the cut. Yes. Even the... Well, not your cut. You ruined it. Cut. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Turned oh, off. Man. Do you eat a finger sandwich in one bite? Yeah, absolutely. The whole thing in your mouth? One bite. It's especially with that, bite. you don't want you don't want the scenario of it sliding out, I and then that. you have two yes. pieces That's of like white three bread. Three bites in your hand. to me. I mean, I would hover around a finger sandwich. You do the same. I do the, hover yeah. around. Yeah, I mean, you do like, the. Uh, who's the asshole? Mm, That's Jordy. Yeah. Lotta. Like, and I got no worries about it. Sometimes I order a finger sandwich tray, and we just eat it at home. Not that's gonna a, lie. I mean, that's a great. If you that's put that thing move. on the table at the house, yeah, it's gone. Just by the right. and you, sandwich tray. For somehow they don't fill you up. But like I said, if you stacked three sandwiches and didn't cut them, nobody would touch no, it. Thank you. That's all in presentation. Unbelievable. It's all about the presentation. Mm-hmm. Um, Neil De Benedetta, <laughs> if you so, if you get a six foot sub at Subway, how many sandwiches is that? Do they, if a they lot. cut it down the middle, I don't even want it. They got to get a diagonal cut. No. But how do you make a diagonal cut at Subway? Bro? You can't do that at Subway. They don't. They don't go down the middle like that. They go like this. They saw. They have the nice knife. Oh, they do. They cut yes. a diagonal at Subway. I, I don't know. I've been to Subway in years, but that's how I would do it. Okay. Yeah. After that Jared stuff. Did we forget about oh, Cole? Oh God. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Cole was. Uh, he got picked up on Sirius this morning. He was a late entry on Sirius. Okay. Uh, and can't make it. Oh, okay. All right. Um. So but we will talk. We will talk to uh, Ben Mintz, and uh, we will talk to Nathan Velasquez. You're telling me Cole Kubler didn't want to come on this show and talk about sandwiches. <laughs> Surprising, I know. I know. I bet he has the opinion that's probably similar to mine. Which Tell is us you in the bunker. Them, How do you cut your sandwich? That's what we need to know. Make a pole. Straight across or diagonal, like a freak. Diagonal. I'm telling you, y'all are going to be in the wrong here. I'm just absolutely sure of it. Diagonal mm. leaves so much crust. Put it on the pole. Opinion, he just said though. the crust is the best part. I said the borders. That's what the crust is. It's the border it's of the sandwich. Though, the diagonal. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. is a little bit of, there is a little bit of of, uh, of bread in between yeah, the crust. Yeah. yeah, what that? Right. Does your son? <laughs> does he like the? Was he ever a no crust kid? Never was a no crust kid. I was. Really? You? I didn't, You're yeah, an anti like crust. You take the crust no, like off the now. bread? I like it now. Well, I would hope I so. You're a grown up. Right. When I was a kid, I, no, <laughs> crust. no crust. I think that's so odd. If my I, kid told but me. I never, to... had, I never ate the little uncrustables, the little 
ones in the yeah, plastic. Yeah, those are weird to I me. Mean, right, we like still eat those. Yeah. Really? It's too, it's too much. It's too big of a in your mouth. Uh, it's no. too gushery. Just stick those in the toaster. Oh, Perfect. that's dangerous. They're good. <laughs> but if my kid said no crust on his sandwich or her sandwich, tough pickles. No, you would gonna, No, off. you're going to have to grow. Life is oh, not about the these things. You no, just get to learn. You say that now. But when they start freaking out at the table, start screaming and punching. If they're the screaming table. about crust, we're going to have a problem. Oh, Dad Lloyd coming out. Okay. I guess so, okay. right? I'll put him in the put him in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Time out. Uh, all right, we're going to talk to Ben Mintz coming up here. Oh, sorry, I took my spot there with the bologna sandwich. <laughs> a, a little feet bologna. <laughs> uh, please don't put your feet on that. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, we will talk to uh, Ben Mintz coming up here in a couple of minutes. We will also talk to Nathan Velasquez coming up here in a couple of minutes. Uh, LSU baseball taking on Alabama. First of games, uh, th- first of three games. Uh, coming up tonight from the box last home series in Baton Rouge. I mean, we're all in the Nobody same. knows. We're all in the same. They're Everybody giving knows. out free tickets, though, to the first 200 people who show up to get a vaccine. Ouch. Wait, I have a... They are. Does that mean... Well, you're not vaccinated as soon as you get vaccined, right? Does it work instantly? No. So then they're a bunch of just unvaccinated people together. Well, Yeah. But that's yeah, but a bad idea. To, they're trying to get you. They're trying to get to you get vaccinated. Right, but they're, 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 yeah. super I mean, there are already tons of unvaccinated people. Yeah, they're true. still going to wear a mask in there, but they're just trying to get you to get going on it. That's true. Speaking of baseball, see this unruly fan? Please play that <laughs> Justice video. was served. <laughs> what happened? Like, why? I don't know. Why I don't know what was just... said. What park is that? Is that San Diego? I think he's at the other park. It might be because the way he got handled after it happened, I'm about to play it. It seemed like... Um, he's in the in a way fan knocked you out. It seems like he's an away fan, and then he gets mobbed. And where are they? Oh, they're in Colorado. Sick. They're in Colorado. Okay, and he's a Padres Colorado. fan. It's about to play for you guys. But. I mean, bro. Uh, Nucky in the bunker said, if you cut it in a non-diagonal half, it better be a vertical cut. Serial killers are developed by cutting it horizontally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nookie, come over to my house and we'll see what's what. <laughs> what's your address? Let's see. <laughs> Most Cut you I mean, look at this guy, bro. Is this all over a baseball? I don't know what this is. What, what is this it? is what I was talking about with my buddies. This I mean, guy. What could happen at the park? I know. If anybody what walks up to you with that kind of strut, you better put your fucking hands yes. up because he's coming yeah. to hit you. I mean, like the guy acted surprised. Even thinking about it, have you seen this other angle, Lloyd? I'm sending you this now. Um, I'm gonna play it again for the fans at home. Should I email it to you or should I text it to you? Uh, email it to me. Um, there's oh a. Oh there, my! You have another God. view of it. There's a second angle of it. I'm, there, I'm sure there's a lot of angles of it. But this, I mean, <laughs> but this guy is like standing right next to him. Um. And, and and I agree with exactly what Lloyd's saying. I mean, you see it. it, it this guy is walking up like he's going to yeah. fight. I he's mean, that hit. guy has nothing but bad intentions on his brain. And the other guy's like, he's going for the, are we really going to? And right, then you get right. knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, this. What's your problem? Boom. Oh and then, God. dude, the best part about the video, after he does that, everybody looks at him and they want nothing to do with him. Yeah, They're like, I mean, like, that's a bad son of a bitch. Man. He's just what knocking about people the guy out. That hurdles the seats, though. Literally, just like, yeah, he just good hurdles move, the dude, Great seat. move. Underrated. A, a very underrated yeah. and under talked about move on that video yeah. is that guy who does not look like he can make that move Mm-mm. just by the simple way of the jeans, the way that they fit. <laughs> yes. and it, it's not worth the risk, to be honest, because if you go, if you catch a foot, you catch yes. a foot now you're tackling down. down. Yeah. But Absolutely. In that moment, making that decision that I'm about to hurdle these yeah. bleachers. After what I Lord. just saw. In one motion. He's like a gazelle in there. The, the he best, is. That right. guy, though, that throws the punch absolutely only wanted to hurt one person. Yeah. He did his job, and then he said, y'all come for me. Just I'm good. I'm back out. I'm good. He took did. The, took the punishment. It was so it must have been something. Between those two. It couldn't have been just a baseball. Like, I mean, what are, right. what are, what are right. fans fighting right. about? I mean, like, did I catch the foul ball or did you did, right? I mean, I mean like, but they're not even close to each other. He I'm comes a, a row over. He's coming from the other aisle with know, nothing man. but bad intentions. And he knocks that him. Hook Is that the best, is that the best right fan punch of all time? It's just the way his, the I guy's mean, body went limp. I mean, he's <laughs> cold. He's knocked <laughs> out. out. The sunglasses out. gone. Just <laughs> sack of potatoes, bro. I mean, like, <laughs> God, the two dead. God in the Tulo jersey just catches him. Yeah, he he's does. Like, oh, my yeah. God. He does. I mean, the bleacher seats catch him. Did you see that angle I just sent I'm, you? Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm downloading it now. Unbelievable. That kind of thing is so entertaining. And you just got to wonder. Somebody said something about somebody's wife. It's got to be. Some, yeah, it had to be so something. they know each right? other? I don't know, man. Who knows? 
we gotta get we got somebody's gotta get this guy on the, on, on, on something. No I knows. mean, he's in jail. Out of Matt, is that jail worthy? Uh, yes, for sure. What is it? I assault. Mean, it's assault. It's well, Tom battery. Granning right? said yeah. he isn't pressing charges, so. The guy's Obviously. not pressing charges? What he says. I mean, he probably wants this to go away as quickly as possible. If I just got knocked right. out and 100,000 people saw it in a, in 30 minutes, no. I'd just be like, let's, make, let's let this one go away. Oh, he probably can't even talk, that's dude. That's viral. That's yes. a broken jaw. Without a doubt. That's yeah, a broken jaw. I mean, he's wired up for right, six weeks. Right. He's drink, he's, he's eating out of a ball. straw. Right. Yeah, he might have he might have done something to his knee. Right. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> the ancillary the, factors the, the way you this. fell. <laughs> Could you? I mean, when you come to and you're like, "Oh no, what happened? What happened? What happened? Did bro, I drink too many bro, beers? You got, got knocked, knocked the bleep out. out. Oh you got gosh. knocked the hell out, man. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, even your boys are like, bro, shit. I don't know if he has any boys there. And look at, I mean, he looks like a loner. Yeah, it's oh. kind of like, where does he come from? I mean, the whole thing just is just. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like anybody's around him. Like, yeah, yeah, go, go, go now. Like, it's like he just <laughs> waltzes in the worst, and throws the punch. The worst sports punch I've probably ever seen was it Rudy Tomjanovich, that guy oh. uh, massacred, yeah. murdered almost. Yeah, they wrote a book about it. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> the worst. His face. Right. That's they the worst I've ever seen. Face. This really? might be second. Yes. Um, oh, so Tom said it was on the news. So, yeah, it's out there. Oh, they yeah. I mean, this, oh, yeah, this, yeah. You, can't hide, you can't hide a video like that. Yeah. Man. Uh, remember, RMB Builders brings you the Jordy Collada Show, rmb builderscom Get in touch with Rhett and the crew. You can call him at 921-7062-225, area code 921-7062. Uh, Rhett about to start an addition over at the UDL. Let Rhett install your automatic valve shut off tub. He is. <laughs> yes. Jordy's trying to change the game. That's Did where you can exist? get your tubs, R&B. Automatic, automatic shut, shut off. off. Jordy wants to run the bath, go to the grocery store, and come back to a lukewarm tub, and at least it's not overflowed. I mean, you're going to be a that millionaire a simple request? off of this idea. I guess I never thought about it. In 2021? I feel like if you're running Like a... I said, man, I mean, Marty McFly had us flying on hoverboards. But I mean, <laughs> we can't get an automatic shut off in a bathtub in 2021? I I feel like if you're running a bath, you know exactly what you're in for. Like I, mean, I got Mulkey's about. He's got to deal with that bullshit at the Hall <laughs> of Fame. Fame. MJ, can you not stop my tub? Tim Mulkey and auto <laughs> shut off tub in her new house Good here. Lord, Ben Mintz next. <laughs> I'm trying to download this video. <laughs> Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard.
Before the hurdler comes over in that video, yeah, yeah. it might have been the hurdler. I'd love to see a different hurdle angle, honestly. Me too. Like kind of stole, yeah. stole the show. He knew he was knocking him out because I mean he swung it. Yeah. Back. Well, yeah. even right. even the way he was walking up, right? Like this cat's got no shot. The The guy was going for the push and shove separate, yeah. and he got <laughs> way more than he bargained for. I mean his hands are even kind of like you know he's kind of going down low. Like, are we gonna do the shove thing? No. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Uh, Benjamin Mintz <laughs> up in New York City will be back down here in South Louisiana for Hogs for a Cause coming up in, I believe, three weeks. One of the great events in South Louisiana. One of the ancillary parts that we didn't talk about with the Saints schedule is that the Saints have an off weekend the same weekend as Jazz Fest down in New Orleans. You I think mean, that the, was on purpose? The NFL did the Saints a solid on that. Really it's and truly. setting up all too well. Uh, Jazz Fest in October sounds really good. The last time I was at Jazz Fest was at Mincy. For a, uh, a daytime show, watching the widespread panic. Really? Yes, indeed. We got super weird. Mincy, how are dead. you? Good morning. Uh, doing doing good, man. It's a beautiful man. spring weather in New York. You can feel the energy kind of coming back to yeah. the city. Oh, and that's awesome. all a first for me because I, I got here Halloween during the middle of COVID. People are out. People are buzzing. You can just kind of feel it. And, you know, with the news, the CDC saying the masks, uh, you know, if you're vaccinated, you're good basically yesterday. Uh, I feel like a huge summer and fall are on the way, and i got to say I'm here for it. Nice. Uh, the college baseball love that you were showing on Twitter, Mitch, you can tell that this seems like it is a freight train leaving the station. I, I can imagine you're getting a lot of a lot of good return on that. Well, I am. I'm loving it. Uh, Dave Portnoy was messing with me a little bit about it the other day on the rundown. He's like, man, I mean, I know this is giving great co coverage for all 20 of the people that care. <laughs> and so, what you know, it's, just, it's funny, like, to have to read. He, like, this is a fascinating job. But that, You know, reading Dave's thoughts is, like, such a huge part of it, you know? Right, sure. Um, but uh, I'm gonna keep, I'm not discouraged at all. I think it's going really, really well. I'm getting tons of messages from all the south and southeast. And, you know, it's, it's, it's good. And uh, I'm going to be going to Omaha, too. I'm really, really excited about that. It looks like we're going to the opening. We're going to go out there for the opening weekend when all eight teams are there. We got a pin property mm. in Council Bluffs, which is five minutes away. And yeah, ready, ready for some college baseball tonight. LSU, you know, the, the pulmonary tradition, man. I mean, they always just like pick it up at the end. That was a good win on Tuesday night against Tech. It was. It was. Mincy, you know Portnoy much better than anybody else on this interview. So, so maybe I'm completely wrong, but he seems like the type of personality where he talks about things and messes with people who he really likes. Uh, I, think so if, my, I, think if he's, I think if he's talking about you uh, and kind of trolling you like he did on the vacation thing and like he's doing on the college baseball thing, deep down that means that he really loves what you're doing. Is would, would be my read. I could be completely off, but that's no, how that's I would read my, it. That's, that's, that's my exact read, too. Uh, you know, and I, I mean, I, 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 it's all about having thick skin too. And this, 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 you know, you work for so That's part. That's a huge part of it. Uh, I think Dave and I have a great relationship. That's my read. He always says what's up to me in the office and stuff in a positive way. So, you know, I feel good about it. We're going to keep going hard at the college baseball. You mentioned Hogs for the Cause. Uh, I'm just so excited about that. That's June 4th and 5th. There's still tickets available at hogfest.org. Great band lineup Friday night, Saturday. I'm going to be like announcing the bands, the winners, the barbecue contest, and uh, eat a bunch of barbecue. I don't see how you can really beat it. And it means a lot to me, to be honest, because I've been to Hogs four different times when I was in New Orleans. All my friends are on team. It's going to be a huge reunion out there. And uh, it just, they raise money for such a great cause. I mean, they're talking about they raised $2.1 in 2019 for families fighting pediatric brain cancer. They built a $4 million house in Baton Rouge. They're focused on the Baton Rouge area as well. Is New Orleans now, and uh, it's just an awesome thing to be a part of, and I'm super excited about it. Yeah, we're fired up for you, man. That is a great event in Louisiana. It's a great representation of the people of Louisiana, and for you to be a part of it uh, and the love that you have for New Orleans is a perfect fit uh, with Hogs for the Calls coming back June 4th and 5th. As Mincy said, tickets still available. What was the website there, Mincy? It's hogfest.org, H-O-G-fest.org, band lineup. I mean, it looks great. Robert Randolph with the Soul Rebels and Taz Friday night. Uh, Old Crow Medicine Show. Uh, Dragon Smoke is Ivan Neville and Stanton Moore and Eric Lindell and a bunch of people. I mean, it's uh, mm. going to be a very, very large time there. So I I'm, I'm, can't wait. 
Looking forward to getting you back down to South Louisiana. So what's coming up this weekend, Mincy? Is there a, a buzz about the Preakness at all in that part of the country? Yeah, a little bit, man. The Baffert thing just yeah. really kind of overwhelmed it. I'm not hearing too, too much about it. Um, I've got a pretty low-key weekend plan, and I'm looking forward to just getting out and about around New York. Uh, really ready. The, the All the bands keep announcing the rock and roll tours, like Fish and Dead and Company both announced this week. And I'm, 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 my, my calendar for New York concerts late summer and fall is looking Looking awful good right now, too. So I'm looking forward to that. But as far as this weekend goes, I mean, I'm probably going to be sitting on the couch tweeting on about college baseball. Be, be truthful. How do, you, <laughs> how do you watch all this baseball? How do you get access to this baseball? Are you just following teams' accounts, or you you have some type of, of, of viewing package that allows you to get into these games? No, the Watch ESPN app, if you get that, Watch ESPN app has almost all of them now. They don't have the Pac-12, but they got everybody else. So I flip around for Big 12, and I mainly watch SEC, but – uh, almost all the games are on that app. So I just flip around there. And then the big thing, I'll like retweet some highlights off Twitter. People respond to the highlights a lot better than they do the non-highlights. Like, if you post a score, you don't get much interaction. But if you post, like, a grand slam, people click on it. Um, so, yeah, I just flip around, and that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping LSU keeps playing well. I'd like to see them get in the tournament. And, you know, I was joking around all about that Road to Rustin thing, but I think Ole Miss may end up on it. And you're going to tap into the Rebels season right now. <laughs> so I think that's kind of ironic. It's the latest projections that Ole Miss is the number two over there. Um, so that's, we'll see. Ole Miss has Vandy this weekend in Oxford. So I hate to not be at Swayze. Uh, two more Rocker against Doug McKenzie tonight. Hell, matchup. Unbelievable. Uh, Mincy, after your recent tour of the South and going to college baseball stadiums, I couldn't help but notice the, the crowd interaction you had at both Mississippi State and Ole Miss and what was lacking when you came to Baton Rouge. Is there Does LSU have – almost a stadium problem where the environment just isn't built out to be what college baseball is supposed to be? I'm not going to say that in the least. I mean, that was LSU's first game to go to 100%. They're oh, having a down year. Yeah, but they were down. Yeah, but, I mean, you're, they're, having a down, they're having a down year at 6 and 12. I mean, I'm not – I don't know. I just – when I think of college baseball, LSU is literally the first school. I think, I think of LSU baseball. I think of Kentucky basketball uh, in, in college basketball. And, obviously, Kentucky didn't make this year tournament this year either. I'm not willing to go near that far. I mean, I think LSU fans travel incredibly well. Uh, I just think it was because they're having a little bit of a bad year. But I, I still have the utmost respect for Box and LSU baseball fans. But did it feel different to you? Uh, it felt pretty good. I mean, it felt a little way back. Yeah, a little bit. But, I mean, it wasn't. I, I don't know. I thought it was still a good atmosphere. I was surprised Arkansas didn't bring more fans, to be honest. But they announced 100% right before it. And there's no real easy way to get from Fayetteville to Baton Rouge. I mean, yeah, that's kind not. of a thing. So... Yeah, I mean, it was a little lighter than I expected, but I'm not going to sit here. You know, it was still a good atmosphere. And, you know, LSU always always travels so big to Hoover, too. I'm curious if they do that again this year. Anything jump off from the NFL schedule? Yes. The Saints bucked Halloween. <laughs> Holy crap. 325, Tom Brady back on Halloween Sunday. I mean, that, that one right there. And, you know, how to me, you were just talking about New Orleans Jazz Fest and Hawks. Halloween and New Orleans is my favorite. Yeah. Halloween in New Orleans is my all-time favorite. And to have Buck Saints at 325, and that's going to be Voodoo Fest and here's some other stuff maybe getting out soon, that that one just blew me away. And the Saints still getting five primetime games despite no breeze, I thought was cool too. Uh, they're playing the Jets up here in New York in December, so I, had, I was looking at that one. But as far as, like, my fall plans go, I'm, I'm trying to leave my calendar open to Wherever Dave Portnoy and Big Cat tell me I need to be, I'm going to be. So Absolutely. I'm trying not. I'm trying not to like be like, oh, I'm going to do this, that, you know, all that. Yeah. Because I don't want to. I don't want to give the wrong impression. You should have some access to some Bengals games up there. Maybe when they get to Pittsburgh or when they get to uh, Baltimore, somewhere where you can just jump in a train and watch. That'd be fun. Now I'm all about it. We need to. I love. I'm looking forward to following the Burrow Chase Bengals. I'd love to see them. Uh, you know, hopefully Burrow can just come back healthy. What a fun, you know, fun season that's going to be to follow. Springtime in New York City. It's a it's a uh, beautiful time of the year, Mincy. Enjoy it. We'll be talking again soon and looking forward to seeing you at Hogs for the Calls coming up in a couple of weeks. I look forward to it. Thank y'all for having me. Always, buddy. Okay. Oh, nothing. Right. I thought it started a little strange. There was some there was some there was some noise yeah, there were some noises there. Yeah. I thought, he, yeah. came, I thought he came in with a little bit of I usually something. I usually like mute the phone for yeah. what before you introduce him, but that I kinda let breathe a little bit just because I'm interested to see right, how sure, you know. Sure. Has he said anything to you ever about that? Never. 
Never. I feel it, like he's hanging up really quickly now, so maybe he's heard us talk about it nah. each time. I mean, it's, and it's all love, dude. It's only a good <laughs> thing. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I just wonder if he's yeah. aware yeah. That, we, that we talk about it. Uh, Advanta Clean brings you the Jordy Collada Show daily. Remember, online at AdvantaClean.com, 225-369-5228. It's how you get in touch with Bradley Lynch and the crew. Water, fire, or mold, if you got it around the house or office, let them take care of your, uh, your troubles today. With that phone call, Lynch can... Come in, work with the insurance company, work with the contractor, and take care of all of your issues with water, fire, or mold damage. Advanta Clean of Baton Rouge. Get in touch with them this morning. We'll come back and talk to Nathan Velasquez and close out this Friday morning here on the Jordy Colada Show, which every day is brought to you by Go Chevrolet. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 485-8022 is where you can find A Bears Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me. Jordy at JordyColladaShow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at JordyColladaShow.com to learn more. Welcome in. Beautiful Friday edition here of the Jordy Colada Show brought to you by Go Chevrolet. Appreciate Corey Kiner, Coach Kim Mulkey, Nathan Velasquez coming up here. We just talked to Ben Mintz. Remember, all of it is brought to you by Go Chevrolet. Good to see Galen Iverstein from Iverstein's Butcher Shop in the UDL this morning. And, uh, been missing our conversations with our boy out west, Nathan Velasquez, but finally we're able to link back up with uh, the five-minute critic here on the uh, on the Jordy Colada show. Good morning, buddy. How are you? Hey, how's it going, man? Doing good, man. Um, this is a this is a big weekend for new releases, isn't it? This is a pretty big week. Pretty big week, especially. I actually uh, I divided my time this last week between Texas and California. Texas is like wide open. Almost feels the same here. So it actually feels kind of like the first weekend that it's like we can actually go to the movies. I like, got big releases out in the theaters, like. Army of the Dead is, I am, I don't know if y'all have seen the trailer for this. I am so pumped for it. I mean, if I don't know the description, it is a heist zombie movie. Mm, that doesn't wow. even sound like it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I am all in for that. Anybody in, in it we that. know? Uh, Dave Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. The Wrestler. Oh, yeah. Is this one coming oh, yeah. to the theaters or this is a Netflix deal? 
Well, this, yeah, this one is a Netflix deal, but it actually came, uh, it's coming out in theaters this week. Okay. So you've got a week in theaters and then, yeah, then after that it'll be out in Netflix. So yeah, that, that one looks like it's going to be a good bit of fun. Is that, is that the new model? Do you think that it'll be go to theaters for just like a premiere and then straight to Netflix, HBO, something like that? I think so. I mean, I would think that in the next maybe year and a half, Netflix is probably going to start buying up a few theaters. I think we'd, it'd be pretty surprising if uh, we don't see Amazon and Netflix do that. And then maybe have like a come and watch our movie in the theater for a week, two weeks, and then catch it on the streaming service. Uh, Nathan, the Oscars came and went, and it was a uh, it felt like a whiff uh, from a, a an award standpoint. Uh, you've been out in Los Angeles. What has been the backlash of the Oscars? And then come to find out, the Golden Globes is, is plummeting uh, as it's been canceled for next year. And, and Tom Cruise is sending back all of his Golden Globe awards. What, what, what's going on with these award shows? Yeah, the day of the Oscars, I invited uh, a friend over, just kind of like, "Hey, let's you know have a few beers, watch the Oscars." And he was like, "Ah, not really feeling." It. I was like, "What the <laughs> hell do you mean you're not feeling it? It's the Oscars." And then, at like 15 minutes in, it was like, Jesus Christ, this, it, it was such a boring show. But, I mean, not, not the show in general, like, but put that to, you know, the side. Like, the day after, the ratings for the Oscars viewership plummeted yeah. 58%. Like, it went down. That, that's an that's unprecedented drop in viewership. And, you know, it's kind of like whatever, you know, the pandemic may be. I mean, like... To be fair, the movies that were nominated, they're not really things that everyone has seen. Like, it's been a long time since Lord of the Rings was nominated, a movie that, like, everyone saw. But, yeah, then going forward, now seeing that the Golden Globes is effectively canceled, and, you know, everyone that's a fan of South Park, Cartman said, if you get one episode pulled, it's gone. (laughs) So as far as I'm considered, like, (laughs) the Golden Globes are pretty much done with. Wow. And then to hear, yeah, the same day that Tom Cruise, that's like the final blow, right? Whenever yeah. Tom Cruise comes out, which he never, <laughs> he never makes these type of like big uh, business political statements, but he comes out and he says, hey, look, I'm giving my awards back. I don't really want them anymore. Like that just, the notoriety of that award show is gone now. And it, it feels like, and I don't know if this is just me, but it feels like the notoriety of award shows in general is, you know, it's kind of going away. It doesn't feel like people are anywhere near as into it as they used to be. Do you think it's all politics? I mean, I feel like that's a large part of it, but I think the bigger one is just, and I don't know if this is me sounding like I'm turning old or something, but the movies just aren't as engaging as they used to be. Like, look back to the type of stuff that was coming out, like No Country for Old Men or, there will be blood or even something like Juno from, you know, that's, you have to go back over a decade for that. Like these are really big, engaging, not polarizing movies that are just excellent movies. I, I feel like what Nomad Land won this year. Like I had to look it up what won last week and it's only been less than a month. I mean, mm. it's not really memorable movies. I would say. Uh, tell us about Minari. Is that the right way to pronounce it? Minari? Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. Which is, you know, that's, and that was a big presence at the Oscars. And I, I would say that, you know, it's still a good movie. Like, there, it, it's, uh, it, it's heartwarming. That one is not really political, although it was kind of sold as a political movie. It's a heartwarming story about a family uh, coming from South Korea in the 80s to make a life for themselves. And it's a, it's a perfectly good movie. I, I think it's on, I forget if it's on Amazon right now, but, I mean, if you watch this, you'll have a perfectly fine time. But that <laughs> dominated the Oscars in a very, very big way. And it's, uh, it's just forgettable. It's something that's like six months goes by. You'll be like, Minari, right. That's a good movie. That's a fine movie, but it's just not something that's really going to take up a lot of headspace that you'll remember five years from now, you know? Yeah. Uh, Nathan, I know that you don't give us Hollywood gossip ever, but I'm going to ask you a little <laughs> bit about, have you kept up with this John Mulaney story? Oh, man. That one hurts. <laughs> that one hurts. Wait, okay, well, wait. Just to, just to gauge like the, the temperature in the room. Is any are any of you guys like fans of the stand up at all? Yeah, I love it. I, yeah, I think he's funny. I, I think, think he's, he's funny. hilarious. I, he is. He is funny, and it's it, it's strange because I feel like it's the same type of thing with uh, same type of thing with Ellen in a way. And who was the other person who kind of got in trouble recently for 
I don't remember. Everyone, everyone's in trouble nowadays. But um, <laughs> oh, Chrissy Teigen. He used, yeah, yeah, she yes, just yes, got in yes. trouble. Wow, Lord. everyone's canceled. What a pull! Yes, it's in there somewhere. She yeah, had to get Chrissy, herself in trouble her, at some point. Yes, I took her cookware off of Amazon, I think, and I, I buy her cookware every week. So that one was also I oh, can't believe I put on that. for Nate. <laughs> I know, I know. But like you know, Ellen, Ellen was always this. Ellen was always this like fun, loving person, and then this scandal comes out that she's you know kind of a jerk to some of the employees, and that ruins her brand. John Mulaney, like, is, you know, in his stand-up, he references, I think, every special he's had back when he was dating his wife to now, it's kind of like, uh, you know, she's kind of a character throughout the entire act. Oh. And then to hear the news, like, you know, normally you hear someone's breaking up, it's like, oh, okay, someone's breaking up. But the fact that, like, she's kind of a character in all of his work, and then to hear, you know, the breakup, it's like, oh, that, that sucks. And then the character of him is kind of like, uh, you know, goody two shoes we hear all of a sudden that olivia munn is now like they're dating after like that was like three days after the announcement it's like hey nothing do your thing man but this doesn't go with your brand it feels a little <laughs> feels a little off all of it doesn't really go with his brand because he's like that you know ups he looks like such a good boy mm-hmm. and then he has yeah. these this this addiction coke to problem. a coke <laughs> problem an absolute <laughs> problem that send him to rehab three times he comes fresh out of rehab what a rebrand to go rehab divorce olivia munn well, and that, like, you know, everyone's got their own demons. So, like, in a way, you kind of hear about it, and it's like, hey, you know, go through what, you know, everyone's got their own thing. But now, I think you got a new special coming out. With all this news, it's going to be like, dude, are you going to address this? Because, like, you, uh, got to do something going on here. I think he totally will address it, <laughs> I think it, he, right? he has to. Way. That's your opening yeah, monologue. It has to, to be. Yeah. Right. I, mean, so, I mean, especially a comedian. Yes. Nate, how much, how much cocaine is too much cocaine in Los Angeles, <laughs> in Hollywood? That was a great question. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I can't. I can't come <laughs> on. What are we talking about? The five minute critic. I can do it in two minutes and fifty seconds. That's how we keep the reviews down to five minutes. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, so you say normalcy in Los Angeles, like the weekends. What's on the plan this weekend? Well, definitely, I'm going to go to the uh, the TCL theater. Going to go see Army of the Dead and IMAX, and then after that, hitting the beach with some cocktails. Nice. There we go. Enjoy it. We'll see you. uh, We'll talk again next Friday, man. Absolutely. Have a great weekend. Thank you. There he is. Nathan Velasquez, the five minute critic, checking in from Los Angeles this weekend. It's a fair question, Lloyd. I think so, too. And I I, I think, yes, it absolutely is. Somebody that is as invested in Hollywood as, as somebody like Mulaney is with the access that those people have celebrities celebrities have where people want to glad hand you and give you things to to that lifestyle um what is too much like what is too much what makes you say all right you know what i i gotta tap out i'm in trouble i gotta i gotta put myself into rehab here Um, and and that's what i wonder if it's uh if it's a weekend thing then they're probably like that's okay if you end up doing it on like a tuesday and a wednesday afternoon you probably like look at yourself like is this what a problem looks like? And then, I don't know, I feel like you wouldn't know that it's too much until you actually get in trouble. But so if, for, it's, if it's a weekend thing, it sounds like somebody in his camp was like, bro, you might need rehab. Well, and it's, it's probably, <laughs> this is how I would, if I saw it, this is when I would say something. Mm-hmm. If we went to a party, and we know you do the after party, and it's 2 a.m., and then you dump sack, <laughs> and then it, like you, you fall asleep, and he's up at 6 still. Like, brother, what are we doing here? Like, you're by yourself. It's not even fun anymore, you know? Like, you can only masturbate so much, <laughs> you know? Right. And not just pulling on it. <laughs> okay. It's a great way to end the week. <laughs> How about an A-Rod and J-Lo update? Yes, oh, please. speaking of he sad. He was asked about their romance or whatever, and his only response was, go Yankees. Oh, no. The backstory of that is, well, I mean, obviously, obviously Sox, he was right? a Yankee. J-Lo met him at a Yankees game, but she was with Mark oh, Anthony at the time, former husband Mark Anthony at the time. Mm. And then you know, before that, she dated Ben. And he uh, obviously is a Red Sox fan, and he was filming a movie, uh, Gone Girl, and was supposed to wear a Yankees hat for that. That ain't going to happen. Famously refused to wear it. He held up happen. production for days. He explained. <laughs> he was like, I can't do it once what I put diva. it on. It's going to become a thing. I'll never be able to get away from this. So that was a Rod's response. Go Yankees. It's kind of a good dig now that I it think about it. That, 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 that might be the way to handle it. That I would mean, be the way to handle it. And handle that's it. all you say. Just you don't say anything else. Keep it moving. It. And I also saw where he was cleared where he is going to become the new owner of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So yeah. things may be trending in the right direction. I don't know. Who knows, man? man? Maybe J Lo's got that Kardashian vibe. 
Oh, you think she's a home wrecker? She a killer? Not, not necessarily a home, a home wrecker, but maybe a brand killer. I mean, she's got to be so much to deal I mean, with. Think, think about so? who who have we heard from? Who have we heard from that she's been in a relationship with well, she, afterwards that had any positive news? I mean, think about Affleck after they, they split up. Yeah. I mean, his right. life's been a train wreck. Yeah. I mean, back yeah, tat, no, he back tat, 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 smoking six, back tat, tat on the divorces, beach. bro. <laughs> yes. I mean, back tat. But he was the, good for a while with Jennifer Garner. She yeah, but so then sweet. he ran off with the babysitter. Yeah, he did do that. I mean, spiral. So that. Just a, 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 just who knows, man. I mean, everybody runs Mar- off. With Mark the Anthony, we Out. Haven't said, uh, had anything from her. Uh, but they're friends. Him. I mean, they co-parent well together. He's probably friends. scared to death of her. <laughs> yeah, don't bring me round her. <laughs> <laughs> Restraining order. <laughs> She's been engaged like five times. Okay, so that's, that's a red flag. That's a her five that, or that's, six. That's, that's married a red, three. That's, a, that's or a red four. flag. That becomes a her problem at that point. That's it has to be. Like all sons point to J Lo. She's got to be. I mean, very career driven, very focused. She's she probably is very uh, career driven. No, well, I mean, she probably I, puts a back I imagine that that part has got to be a little bit in the rearview mirror. The part that you probably can't get past is that. It's always got to be about her. I mean, right, she lives in a world where people open up her water bottles for her. Yeah. You know what I mean? They start her car. They put the, the, the toothpaste on the toothbrush for her. I mean, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't, she has a lifestyle that we can't even fathom. Right. right. And almost A-Rod probably can't even fathom. But Somebody who is in that, to that get there. same. Yeah, she does. She I, I'm not knocking it. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I'm not, but I'm just saying for somebody like that. How can another person really satisfy you? you? Can't. What void do you fill? I mean, what 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 is somebody else gonna do for you realistically? You can't. I mean, what what company? All these people that have come and gone in her life. I mean, somebody had to have a connection with her. Yeah. That was really like chemically, like from a chemistry standpoint, made a lot of sense. But at the end of it, she doesn't need anything. Well, maybe it was Ben. And then now she's come full circle. You know who's excited about it? Matt Damon. And I think that's so cute. <laughs> they he are is friends. like genuinely really excited about Benefer being back. Well, and I, mean, I am too. Benifer. I'm here for it. I wonder it. what it would be if like you're, if you're Ben's best friend. I'd be all about Benefer. You well, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. no, Ben, send the jet. Get me the con- <laughs> get me the Cosmo. Yeah, can we bro. use yeah? Can we use J Lo's jet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's richer than all of. I mean, J Lo's. She's the richest one in the room, right? I think yeah, so. Is she the richest brand. one in the room out of a Rod. Well, she has everything. Maybe not Matt Damon. I don't know though. She's Is got Matt Damon married? Uh, yeah, to a, a, a waitress, I think, that he married a long time ago. I think they're still together, right? I don't know. Oh. That was she was a no question. name person, and yeah. Go her. Yeah, yeah. go you her. Kidding? What do you mean, go him. Go right. her. Right. Must have got right. the order right. right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. um, I wonder what it'd be like. If we dated J Lo, like how long that would last? Just your normal, your waitress. Everybody like if there's a you know waitress a waiter scenario. Yeah. I think well, maybe. Y'all yeah, would have a fun like two week run probably. Maybe two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Then I would do. I would step two in it so fast. Like, Forty eight hours. You got to go. Forty eight hours. You overflowed the tub a third time. <laughs> <laughs> there's she no automatic shut off in this house. J Lo thought you were rich. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Off on my hoverboard. <laughs> and she has someone sitting there, like turning the water off. Absolutely, for. I mean, she's that job. She's got the coming to America bass. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I mean, <laughs> she's got she the coming died. to America bass. How long bro. can you hold your breath? <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, she needs nothing. She Unbelievable. Needs nothing. What is somebody else gonna do for Jennifer Lopez? <laughs> it's saying she's company. I mean, she just gets yeah, lonely every every five years. Ben, get out of here. I'll call you in she's, five years, bro. She's leasing men. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty Dang. much. Uh, and, and and a stock killer. Yes, I mean, well, she's I mean, got the Kardashian effect. I couldn't imagine going from that to what you would be like a different person after that in terms of physicality. Like it had the bedroom has to be unbelievable. I mean, she's so. Yeah. I mean, if you've seen her on stage, like yeah. that's probably a, an absolute activity. Well, yeah, it's a I mean, workout. She was on a stripper pole in the Super Bowl. So yeah, yeah we that's all what I'm know. saying. So we how could you? I mean, the situation is I like. can see. I can see why a Rod's down bad. <laughs> like, not gonna get that again for yeah, a minute. Right, yeah, yeah, you gotta I mean, go just, professionally. That was that was some cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just think back. That's why I'm filming all of the old times. Like, damn, go into the memory bank. <laughs> uh, all right, have a great weekend, LSU Alabama at the box, hundred percent capacity. If you missed anything, remember RMB Builders brings back all of our podcast. Make sure like, share, and comment on anything that you see out there. We always are, are uh, extremely grateful for that. Uh, have a good weekend. Go Chevrolet, driving us every day. We'll be back with you Monday morning.